Hello there, and welcome back to our Five Wishes video series. I hope you've been following along with us as we have already taken a look at the Five Wishes introduction, uh, Wish 1 and Wish 2. We are here at Friends of Citrus in the Nature Coast where we are helping people healing lives. My name is Jonathan Beard. I'm the Community Education Manager here, uh, filming live from the Wings Grief Center down here off uh, West Perry Winkle Lane in Homosassa, Florida. And yes, it is sunshiny and a beautiful day outside, and so I hope you're enjoying wherever you are today. We're going to be taking a look today at Wishes 3, 4, and 5 in the Five Wishes document. Uh, if you do not have a copy of this, uh, that is no problem. Uh, you can simply follow along uh, with the uh, video prompts that we have, and then feel free to pick up a copy of this, if you will. You can find it on agingwithdignity.org fivewishes.org, or we encourage you to come on by our offices in Homosassa and pick up a copy. Uh, we are making those uh, free of charge to anybody that would come. Typically, they would cost about $5 uh, per copy, uh, but we want to uh, be a support to you in any way that we can. So we're going to look at wishes three, four, and five personal, emotional, and spiritual wishes. These are wishes that do not have any legal ramifications to them. Uh, these are things such as uh, my wish for how comfortable I want to be, uh, my wish for how I want people to treat me, and then finally my wish for what I want my loved ones to know. Even though uh, these uh, wishes do not put any legal requirements upon the health care providers or doctors or uh, friends or family, still we don't expect people just to kind of push them to the side because these wishes are important. It's important to take a look at, for instance, how comfortable I want to be. So let's take a look at just glancing down through some of these. Again, the five wishes document is set up uh, with some just very basic ingredients uh, that are there to take a look at that you can either agree with or disagree with. If for some reason you're reading down through this on page eight, wish number three, and you say, I, I don't want that, you can simply cross it out, date it, initial it, uh, so that everybody knows that that was your markings on your document. Each document is an individual document, so it's entirely up to you as to how comfortable you want to be. Uh, things such as, I do not want to be in pain, I want enough medication to relieve the pain. Uh, if I show signs of depression or, or nausea, shortness of breath, I, I want my caregivers to do whatever they need to do to help me. Uh, some along these lines are things that you, know, you might want, you might not want. I want a cool, moist cloth uh, put on my head if I, if I have a fever, if that's helpful. Or if you just don't like things touching your skin and you don't want that, cross it off. Uh, now, here's one that I can relate to. I want my lips and mouth kept moist to stop dryness. Now, guess what I carry with me everywhere I go? That's right, chapstick. And since the time I was a kid back in high school, I have to do this right now, I have needed chapstick. I had the worst chapped lips when I lived in Huntington, West Virginia, and the breeze would come through, and I'd lick my lips, and I do that when I'm just concentrating or just doing something. But I've learned that chapstick can prevent that. So now I cannot go anywhere with dry lips. You ask my wife, I am a total grump if I don't carry chapstick with me everywhere I go. And if I get away from the house without chapstick, I've got to make a run to the local dollar uh, store just to pick up some just so I have it in hand so I don't have to worry about uh, being a grump for the rest of the day. See, now you say, well, Jonathan, that's silly. Well, you know what? It's silly to you. But it may not be silly to me because that's how comfortable I want to be. And that's something that's important to me. So if I'm laying there and I can't communicate to you, my lips are getting chapped and my lips are dry, then I am a miserable grump and I need chapstick. Now, don't pull out any of this Vaseline stuff or, or the Wonder Jelly or anything like that. I'm not interested in that stuff, let alone those little lemon swabs, you know, those things that you keep in the package at the hospital and the, then they pop them out and they stick them in your mouth and roll it around to try to keep your mouth uh, moist. Do not, I repeat, do not stick a lemon swab in my mouth. I do not like lemon. I have never liked lemon. I don't like it presently and I don't plan to like it in the future. Now, if they change the flavors of those little swabs and they come out with strawberry swirl, 
They come out with double chocolate fudge, then I am good to go. You just pop that sucker right in. But as long as it's a lemon swab, I say no thank you. And you may feel the same way about lemon or you may feel the same way about something else. Here is your opportunity to cross out things that don't apply, to write in things that do apply. I do not want this. I would like this. Here are some things. You want warm baths as often as possible, kept fresh and clean. Oh, with ladies, you'll love this one. I wish to be massaged with warm oils as often as possible. Eh, not me. No, thank you. But if it works for you, that's all good. Um, do you want a catheter in? Do you want a catheter out? Uh, personal items like shaving. You know, I can tell the story of my mom. She promised me never to tell this story while she's still alive. Uh, mom has been gone uh, close to uh, uh, seven years now. And uh, she had a hair growth that, that came up on her face to the point that she literally had to shave, to the point that she had to shave every day. And she told us as uh, life got a little bit more uh, serious at, at the end of her life, that if she was unable to do that, that she wanted us to make sure that she was shaved every day because she would be embarrassed uh, for anybody to come and visit her and to see her uh, with, um, you know, with hair growth on her face. And so that's something that we uh, honored her wishes and make sure that she was well shaven all the time. Uh, do you like your teeth in? Do you like your teeth out? Uh, you know, what are things? What, what are your uh, desires as far as uh, spiritual care is concerned? Do you want somebody to come and provide some comfort at your bedside, maybe just with some spiritual readings, maybe a prayer or two? Or is that something that's like, nah, you know, I don't think that would be helpful to me. How comfortable do you want to be? Options for hospice care that provides emotional, uh, spiritual, and physical help at end of life. Those are all things to consider with wish number three, how comfortable I want to be. Let's move right on to wish number four, which is how I want people to treat me. Are there certain people that you definitely want to be by your side at end of life? That if possible, that they could be there to provide comfort for you? And I might add, are there certain people that you don't want to be with you at end of life? Because quite honestly, their, their presence would not be helpful at that time. This is your opportunity to express some of those desires. Are you one that likes to have your hand held and talk to when possible? Or are you one that's like, don't touch me, just, just kind of stay away? Um, are you one, again, with your spiritual base, people praying for you, members of your faith? Some of the most beautiful deaths that I have witnessed have been those who have had members of their faith nearby. And it can be a beautiful thing, uh, given the circumstances. Yet at other times, I've witnessed some that don't want to have any part of that. And, and that is uh, your rightful uh, decision to make as far as that is concerned. Do you wish to be cared for with sad kindness and cheerfulness? Um, how about pictures uh, by the side of your bed? Is that something that would be helpful uh, to have pictures, maybe just to help remember family or friends or people that have been close to you? How about music? Uh, any particular music that you'd like to play? Uh, my grandmother lived to be 99 years of age and I had the opportunity to spend the last week uh, with her up in the state of Ohio and as I was there they were playing music in the background at the little facility that she was in and I thought to myself I know she liked music but I couldn't remember what station she liked to listen to or what type of music and I wondered to myself I wonder if that's the kind of music that she actually likes or she doesn't at that point it was too late to ask her but uh, at least the music was uh, calming and, and, and peaceful and seemed to be helpful to her. Now, another part of this is uh, dying in your home if you can. You say, now, Jonathan, you're really getting crazy. I didn't know I could pick where, where I die. Well, no, there's no guarantee that we, any of us can pick where we die. But you might be surprised. Uh, sometimes even with hospice care, you're given an opportunity whether you want to uh, receive care in the home setting or perhaps in a, a different setting, a facility or a hospital or even hospice house, depending upon the circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, making those uh, wishes known to your loved ones will be very helpful as they may make some of those decisions with you. And then number five uh, is what I want my loved ones to know. Here is an opportunity for you perhaps to write some things down. We've had uh, grandparents uh, share some letters to be given to their grandchildren uh, after they die. 
uh, something they just wanted to pass on to them, things that they just wanted their grandchildren to have or wanted them to, to know about their life or how proud of they were of them. Uh, others who have asked to provide forgiveness uh, for other family members or friends, and also to be in a position to uh, kind of give them perspective on life and maybe even some uh, encouraging words along those lines. It's very important that there's an opportunity to express what you want those that are going to be left behind to know. In fact, that can make a huge difference in someone's life if they know uh, what was important to you and then expressing that to them, it may change the way in which they live their lives in light of all eternity. And so uh, it's an opportunity uh, to take a look at uh, uh, what you want to pass on to those that are left. We had one gentleman who actually wrote his own eulogy, and I just happened to be at the, the funeral service that day, and, and they came up and they said, now we're going to read the eulogy that just happened to be written by the one who died. And I remember just a portion of that, and he had put in some things that he thought was uh, uh, kind of light and just to kind of uh, make some fun of his life. He says, you all are surely gathered here today because uh, I have ingested entirely too much sodium over the course of my lifetime. And he was sure that that was part of the reason for, for his death. And so he kind of lightened the crowd up with just his own eulogy. And today you can make uh, videos. Uh, today you can do all kinds of remembrance uh, things uh, that could be helpful in different ways. So don't let anything limit uh, if you, what you would like to do. Just make some plans in advance. Uh, that also goes with pre-planning as far as funeral services and uh, what you desire. Will you wish to be cremated? If you wish to have a traditional burial, burial uh, where is that? Uh, which uh, funeral home provider are you working with? Uh, where do you desire to have your uh, uh, cremains? Or where do you desire to, to be buried? All of those things are important to kind of put those things in place. Um, memorial service, uh, who would you like to have to uh, preside over the memorial service? Uh, perhaps a uh, preacher friend or someone who's been close to you that would help in, in that regard. Uh, is there certain things that you want said, certain things you don't want said, certain music you want uh, uh, included, uh, scripture readings? Anything that's important would be helpful. Uh, I'm fortunate to say that I have a, a mom and dad that uh, both passed on from this life, but both of them left very specific arrangements uh, for their uh, memorial service. And I, without a doubt, I had the assurance of knowing that we were providing a service that they desired and something that they would be very, very happy with. It's also an opportunity, if you have not already, to make provisions uh, for making um, anatomical gifts, or more commonly known as organ donations. If that's something that you desire to do, then I strongly encourage you to do some homework and to take a look at making some pre-planning arrangements on that to make sure that that happens. Uh, because that's uh, very important. As an afterthought, it, it may be too late uh, looking back if your family goes, oh, oh, they were looking at doing this. Well, unless it's uh, at time of death and preparations have been made, uh, the chances are, are thin that that will take place at that point in time. All right, so today we had a chance to look at uh, wishes three, four, and five, uh, dealing with personal, emotional, and spiritual wishes. And again, uh, there'll be more information available on those uh, by attending a Five Wishes workshop. So be looking at our information at Friends of Citrus and the Nature Coast. You can find us on the Facebook page. You can find us on the YouTube channel. All kinds of information out there. We're down here in Homosassa, Florida. Uh, there's the information on the screen. It'll tell you how to get in touch with us. My name is Jonathan. You can just ask for me. Uh, we can make a connection and let you know how we can be of further help and support to you. I wish you the best uh, with your Five Wishes. And hopefully we are continuing to uh, help people and to heal lives. Thank you very much. Hello, I'm Melissa. I'm the Executive Director of Friends of Citrus and the Nature Coast, where we provide help, hope, and healing to all those experiencing grief. Our programs serve people of all ages and stages that are in grief distress through in-person, online, and telephone support. Everyone needs a little help navigating loss and difficulties. We provide a lifeline of support for all those experiencing grief distress. 
Your support makes our important work possible. Our team is here for you, and we are working hard at providing grief resources. Our work depends on your financial support. So please log on to our website, Facebook, mail, or call to leave your gift today. Thank you for supporting Friends of Citrus in the Nature Coast.